Hi guys, welcome back to my channel in Zain Med. This is Supreeta. I am a third year medical student in BGS Medical College, Bangalore, India. And in today's video, I am going to be talking to you guys about how to study anatomy effectively and retain it for a longer period of time. I know anatomy can be a pretty daunting subject and most of you probably dread it. But trust me, at the end of the video, you'll realize that anatomy is not actually that hard. So without further ado, let's get started. The steps I usually like to follow when I'm reading any topic in anatomy is number one, get an overview, two, structure your study, number three, conceptualize, number four, the checkpoint and number five, the clinical application. So let's dive a little bit deeper into each of these steps. When it comes to overview, what I mean by this is that when you're first starting a particular chapter or a topic, before you get into the details, first start familiarizing yourself with the names of the muscles, what are the major nerves of that compartment, what are the major arteries of that compartment. For example, if I say deltoid, even if you don't know what is its insertion or what is its origin, at least you must be able to identify that, okay, it is a muscle that is found somewhere near my shoulder joint. So for First, orient yourself with the names of the muscles because I know when you first get into MBBS, all these new names and muscles is going to seem like Greek and Latin to you. Well, because most of the names are in Latin. So make sure that you know what is the position of each of these muscles. You must at least be able to identify what region they belong to. And if I ask you what is the nerve of a particular compartment, even if you don't know all the minute branches, you must at least know what are the major nerves. For example, if I say the forearm, you must know that there are three major nerves for that particular compartment compartment that is the ulnar, the radial and the median nerve. So before you dive deeper, get a gross picture of everything. Now comes structuring your study. Now what structuring is, is basically you're trying to put down a framework for yourself so that by the end of this topic, you must know these things. For example, if I am studying a muscle, at the end of the day, I should be able to identify what is the origin, what is the insertion, what is the action and what is the nerve supply to that particular muscle. If I am studying about the arteries, I should know what is the origin, what is its course, where does it terminate and what are its major branches. If I am learning about a nerve, I should know what are its roots, what is its course, its relations and what are its major branches. So when you do this, it's going to act as a framework and then when you start conceptualizing, you can start filling in all the gaps in between. When it comes to conceptualization, this is the most important part of the entire process. And I usually like to build my concepts in anatomy in two ways. Number one is through deduction and number two is going to be through visualization. By deduction, I mean deducing things. So let's first start with that. What I mean by this is that let's take an example of a muscle of the forearm that is flexor digitorum superficialis. Now I know this is a muscle of my forearm compartment and I also know that by the end, I need to know the four important aspects of it. That is the origin, insertion, the nerve supply and its action. But instead of reading this, let's just try and break down the name of the muscle a little bit. It says flexor digitorum superficialis. What does it mean? It basically means that it should flex your digits, right? So now you deduce the action of the muscle by looking at the name of the muscle. So now if my digits have to be flexed, where do you think the insertion of this muscle is going to be? It has to be inserted into my digits, right? Because if it is not inserted into my digits, how will it be able to flex? So now you know the insertion somewhat. Maybe you don't know to which particular phalange it is getting attached to, but you have an idea, okay, it should get attached to either my middle or my distal phalange. So now you know its action and you also somewhat know its insertion. Now you have to know the origin, right? If you look around a little bit in any of your textbooks, you will realize that most of the flexor muscles of your forearm originate from one particular region that is your medial epicondyle. It is a common flexor origin. Only a few other muscles have origin from the uh, ulna or the radius. So you also know the origin now. Now it comes to the nerve supply. 
Now remember I told you guys that when you start studying you should get an overview of what are the nerves and arteries of that particular compartment well I told you that in the forum the three major nerves are going to be your radial your ulnar and the median nerve so this muscle also has to be supplied by either one of these three nerves and out of this I can sort of rule out the radial nerve because it is present laterally and this muscle is taking origin medially so it is highly unlikely that a nerve that is present laterally is going to come and supply a nerve that is present medially so the only two options that are present is the median nerve and your ulnar nerve right so out of these two if you read just a little bit you will realize that your median nerve is going to supply most of the superficial muscles and your ulnar nerve is going to supply most of your deeper muscles and the muscles present in your palm so by this logic it means that the, the nerve that is supplying this muscle is going to be your median nerve. So here, even if you don't know the particular origins and insertions, if you just have like a bigger picture or if you just use your brain a little bit, you will be able to make out all the connections and all the associations. You don't have to buy heart everything but this does not always work okay for example if i tell you a muscle like trapezius there is nothing that i can deduce from its name right so when this happens the best tool for you is going to be the second part that is going to be visualization and by visualization what i mean is basically going to be focusing on your dissection and your dissection videos Whenever you get an opportunity, please try to do as much dissection as you can because whatever you see is going to stick to your brain. Nothing is a better teacher of anatomy than dissection. But unfortunately, if your uh, colleges are closed due to this lockdown and you can't do dissection, then your next best option is to look at dissection videos online. So every time before starting a chapter, try to look at the dissection videos. Try to orient yourself with the muscles the arteries and nerves of that particular compartment and then try to read your textbook and the other resource that you can use are going to be animated videos and these videos are going to be very helpful because they are going to give you an orientation of the muscles they will actually show you where this muscle is originating from where is it getting inserted into it will show you how its actions work so try to look at a lot of visual things and try to visualize it in your brain as well because if you don't visualize there is no use of reading anatomy at all this is the most important process to check and understand whether what you have learned has actually been registered in your brain or not and you can do this by drawing whatever you have learned I think one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people tend to do is when you get into higher classes you stop practicing diagrams but diagrams are going to be the most important tool for you in learning as well as in your exams just start with drawing on a piece of paper okay so this is my external carotid artery my facial artery begins at the level of the greater cornu of the hyoid bone so i draw it here and then my facial artery winds around the lower border of the mandible and then it goes lateral to the lips and then it ends by anastomosing with the ophthalmic artery near my lacrimal gland start drawing like this whatever you have learned even though you thought you have understood everything there might be still things that you are not very clear with and this will be cleared only when you sit down and draw diagrams draw your muscle origins and insertions draw the course of an artery draw the course of a nerve and then this will also help you reinforce your memory because obviously always visual memory is better than just reading whatever is given in the textbook next comes the most important thing that is the clinical application because the curriculum has changed it is actually a good thing that the curriculum has changed and a lot of clinical questions are being included in the first year itself but i know it can be pretty scary for the first years because you basically don't know anything you have never been to the clinics so you will not have any idea about how something that you're reading is going to be relevant in the clinics 
and for this the most important thing that can help you guys is going to be your mcq questions so what i want you guys to do is take a bunch of previous year neat papers chipmer papers and aims papers which are chapter wise and start looking at the mcqs that is given there and there's 99% chances that once you look at these mcqs you will not be able to answer most of them even though you have read that particular chapter because you'll realize that you never knew that whatever you had studied could be applied like this or you would have never estimated that these kind of questions could have been made out of what you have studied right so start solving your mcqs and you will realize that these mcqs are going to act as a nidus for you around which you can start building your knowledge reciprocally for example let me take the example of thyroid enlargement what happens when your thyroid is enlarged is usually we will not be able to palpate our carotid pulses so when this happens we want to differentiate whether the carotid pulse is not being elicited because it has moved laterally because of the enlargement or is there an actual carcinoma of the thyroid that has infiltrated the carotids okay so now to differentiate this what we will usually do is palpate the superficial temporal artery in front of your tragus now why is this why do we do this this is because your superficial temporal artery is a branch of your external carotid artery and if your external carotid artery has just moved sideways because of the thyroid enlargement then this pulse will be present but if it has been infiltrated by a carcinoma there is no place for the blood to flow so this pulse will not be present so this is how clinical application is going to be used in your day to day clinics but if i just ask you uh, a first year student about why the superficial artery is important or relevant clinically you will not be able to answer that so much but you can improve it by looking at a lot of mcqs like this or looking at a lot of case presentations if you get a chance to go to the clinics you will be able to pick up these small things which is going to help you okay so whenever you're trying to improve your clinical application skills you must also be able to critically think everything is not going to be served to you on a platter you also have to start thinking you also have to start analyzing things so only if you're willing to learn things will you be able to grasp the concepts so if you have an opportunity to go to clinicals next year or in your third year ask as many questions as you can from the attending physicians or the interns go prepared if you know that there is a particular case that you have to be attending on that particular day then try to read up on it before and then if you have any doubts drill your physicians or your interns okay because that is how you will be gaining knowledge i guess that is all for today guys if you enjoyed this video please let me know in the comment section below thank you so much for watching have a nice day bye